Peng Hua, I said, I'm carrying your child. Please marry me before the child is born. Peng was angry. Perhaps I'll marry you later, he said. The child comes too early. Have an abortion. I will not have an abortion, I told him. It is our child. Do you want me to kill a human being? What human being? Don't be silly, he said. It's just a fetus and nobody needs to know. There are some good clinics. What do you mean nobody needs to know, I said. God will know. What? he said. You let your life be dictated by an imaginary being no one can see and who does not exist? Helan, the proprietor's daughter, welcomed us. I liked her very much. Then Peng began a long argument. God is a figment of the imagination, he said. What's worse, God is a father figure people obey out of a sense of fear or guilt. Look at the history of our own people. Religion was used to keep us in subjection, he said. Kong Fu Zi taught our ancestors to stand in awe of the ordinances of heaven. Women's feet were bound so that they couldn't walk. Men were told how to wear their hair. Kings ruled by the authority of a mandate from heaven. They could do to their subjects what they liked. The poor were kept in submission. Stupid religious texts justified class domination and extortion. It's only by throwing off religion that we have become free, Peng told me. And the Christian God is even worse, he said. Thousands of innocent people were tortured or burnt at the stake as witches or heretics. The whole mistake lies in believing there is a God who dictates what we should do or not do. Jews and Muslims believe God forbids them to eat pork. Jehovah's Witnesses refuse blood transfusion because God has told them so. Indians are convinced God wants them to sing and dance like lunatics. I agree with Nietzsche and Sartre, Peng concluded. Even if a god did exist, we should not allow him to dictate our life to us. We have to assert our freedom as human beings and use our own intelligence. Abortion is the rational thing to do. After Peng's demand for an abortion, I thought a lot about his words. I did not agree with him. I knew I had to take an important decision. I remember the saying of Kung Fu Zi, a fish may sink and lie at the bottom of the sea. It will still be seen quite clearly in the light of heaven. Therefore a good person should examine his heart to make sure there is nothing wrong there. 
Pung was right in rejecting the image of God as a capricious tyrant who imposes arbitrary do's and don'ts. God is much more like the water, the air, and the light, which surround us and in which we move and live. If we listen to our nature, we're in harmony with heaven, Kung Fu Zi had said. I was carrying my child. It was now part of me, as much as I was part of nature. I knew I did not want to abandon my child because of some freak commandment of God, but because doing so would go against my own nature. God, being like water, air, and light around us, does not restrict our freedom. God leaves us free to make our own responsible decisions. If we were pious people, Peng said, we would think that heaven is angry with us. Don't the gods heap blessings on their friends and disasters on their enemies? Instead of sheltering here, we should fall on our knees and plead for mercy. You don't know anything about real religion, I told him. God is our creator. God doesn't interfere with the course of nature. God has given us our creative freedom to look after ourselves. God works on another level. Then what level does your creator God work on, he asked. God works through our conscience. Through reason we can work out what is right and wrong. 